Hello everyone, my name is Maz Barami from More From Research. Welcome to the first session of Ultra Rapid Coding with Philip Maimen. Uh, I'm very happy to have Phil here. He's a very good friend of mine to give you a sh very short background of, you know, Philip, you know, he has a PhD in finance from University of Chicago, a master in applied mathematics, a uh, bachelor of computer science, both of them from Harvard University. As of now, he's a professor of analytics, director of master of science business analytics program at Fairfield University. He's the founder, co-founder of, you know, a few journals, Algorithm Finance, Journal of Sport Analytics. He also won, you know, a Wolfram Innovator Award in 2015. We are very happy to have him today. You know, we are going to do lots of fun things using Wolfram language. In a few seconds, we would try to solve some interesting problems. So I would just stop now and I would hand it over to Phil. Thank you, Mads. And let me give an introduction of Mads. Mads is uh, an amazing guy. We met at the summer school, I guess, a year ago, year and a half now, right? And he, uh, you know, I have a lot of uh, ridiculous questions about quantum mechanics. And Mads is the most patient person on Earth. Uh, any question you ask him about theoretical quantum physics, anything, he'll explain and explain and explain over and over I, until I get it. I, I, st I still have a few follow-up questions, but we'll get back to that. Thanks. Uh, so welcome everybody. Uh, if you have questions or, or something you'd like to work on, post it in the chat and we'll get right on it. Um, I was thinking we could start with some like, I want to show off the power, right, of Wolfram and how cool it can be. Uh, there's this website called Rosetta Code um, that has lots of programming puzzles for anybody to take a look at. Um, and we can find, I th it's a fun activity to look at these tasks or whatever they call them, programming challenges, and see how much shorter it is in, in Wolfram language and how quickly you can write it too. Uh, one of the power, one of the big advantages in the power of Wolfram language is not necessarily the speed of uh, calculation because it's just computers are the same. It's the speed of how quickly you can write it um, and you, how quickly you can get to what you want to do. So let's let's pick a random one of these. How are we going to pick a random one of these? Well, let's not do it manually. That's that's too hard. Let's uh, import the hyperlinks. So if you import, it gives you a bunch of choices, right? You can say, well, what is it that I can import from this URL? Oh, you can import all sorts of things. Well, all I really need is the hyperlinks. Okay, let's get the hyperlinks. And then the hyperlinks, what do they tend to look like? They are all wiki slash whatever. Okay, so we can just choose a random one of these. Let's do random choice. And uh, we'll just feel lucky. Let's just do a system open on it right away. Hopefully it's, a, it's not a link to like a terms and conditions or something. Okay, here we go. Uh, this is still on the screen, right? You can see my, my screen. Hofstadter figure figure sequences. These two... Uh, uh, do you like this question, Mads? What do you think? These two are defined as sequence, not present sequence S starts mm -hmm. and given and see, I'll tell you why it's a bad question. Um, they're already telling you to name, to create two functions and what they should be called. Uh, it's not, it's not an actual task. It's a, it's a way of, um, computing something that we already know how to compute. So that's not interesting. Let's try another random one. Hopefully we get an interesting one this time. Uh, church numerals. I think that one may be just too hard. Uh, and it may actually be built in. Um, oh, let me show you one quick little trick. So in, why it's taking so long to load each time is because I didn't save this anywhere. So if I just do, let's say links equals, then every time I want to get a new one, uh, from now on, it'll be instantaneous. All right. Combinations. Generate all combinations. Yeah, this is literally a one-liner. I'll just show you what the uh, combinations are. Uh, unless I misread it, is it more complicated than I thought? Given M and N, generate all M combinations of the integers in sorted order. Each combination, so three com five. Yeah, th isn't this just tuples? Zero, one, four, one, two. If it is more natural in your language, start counting from one, then combinations should be from one to N. So generate all. Let's find this. Actually, I'm, this isn't quite tuples, right? I think it's, um, is it partitions? 
there's got to be a way to do this. Uh, if not, then we can write one quickly. This is kind of cute. I, I, I didn't understand this question first. So 3 comp 5, we want to take, uh, so here's the brute force way of doing it, obviously. You could take any um, any three. I think that's so two. Phil, we have a suggestion by one of our users. You know, he suggested the code. So oh, uh, let's try it out. Subsets, mm -hmm. range. Uh, we could just do n because they said if that's more natural, that's fine. Um, uh, let's do uh, try it for five. Uh, I think ah right. You probably want this n to be an m, right? So it's something like this. And does that do it? I think that is everything, isn't it? Because it is in mm -hmm. order. One, two, three, one, two, four, one, two, five. Yes. Um, and this uh, great suggestion. It's Twitch. Well done. Uh, let's yeah, do it there. Yeah, I agree. One of our other users, you know, they mentioned that, you know, please provide, you know, any suggestion. That yeah. 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 Fantastic. Uh, so let's do it their way so we can com compute exactly like you said. Uh, zero to uh, n minus one. So three, it'd be zero, one, two, zero, one, three, and let's put it in their format. Um, uh, I guess just grid. And let's mm -hmm. compare it side by side. Zero, one, two, three, two, three, two, three, four, boom, done. Great. And that's uh, literally a one line. That's not even a one liner, right? It's like uh, a quarter of a line, a tenth of a line. Um, just for fun. Let's look at what is typically considered a, a good programming language that people use. They're like, oh, they're so excited. We got to learn some Python. Let's see what they did in Python. Yeah. What, which do you find more satisfying? <laughs> this their ultimate example, their best example, or subsets of range. That's awesome. Let's look at Julia. You know, is it there? Let's see. All right. Recursive without the library. Where's the previous solution? Oh, get a library, define it for I in print line. Print line. What is this? 1983. Um, yeah, fine. So, I, I guess combinations is. Uh, I don't. I don't know, Julia. What does the apostrophe do? But anyway, so combinations is just built into. Great. Um, good. Uh, Look at Julia Lowell. Good. And if you don't have the library, that's the nice thing of the batteries included stuff. You don't have to remember. Like, is the is there? Do you have to remember what library? You have to remember what library it is, right? Here, it's just it's it's all available. Good. Let's try another one. This is fun. We're gonna finish the entire website today. Oh, so see, so it opened the wrong thing. It opened the Twitter link. Fine. File input output. That's probably not a puzzle. We could select on the hyperlinks to get something that's more likely to be correct. Okay, here, top swaps. That looks interesting. A card game. All right. Let's check out this card game, people. You guys play cards? The nice thing about cards is one of my favorite functions on the Wolfram Function Repository. I'm just sorry for a bit of a diversion. Uh, playing card, I think it's called. Yeah. This is just so cool. It, you know, you just give it a number and it gives you the card right away. You don't have to bother with uh, A3 or whatever spades. Okay. So you have a particular permutation. So we're still continuing on this too. Great. Um, oh, someone's pointing out Python has a built in too, if you have, uh, if you use their library. Um, if you have a particular permutation of a set of n cards where the leftmost card is on top, reverse the first m cards where m is the value of the topmost card. Okay. So this is just a recursive thing. What's the big deal? Rounds are repeated until the topmost is one and the number of swaps is recorded, for example. I, I don't really see what the issue is, but we could we could work on it. Let's make this a little smaller so we can do side by side. This seems like a really trivial thing. So we have a two, four, one, three. Uh, and we're going to uh, fixed point list Oh, we can't do while. Um, let's do nest list while. Uh, do we need, ne yeah, nest list, nest while list. Um, you may be surprised. Uh, can you see my help screen? If not, let me double check it. Uh, yeah, we can see that. Oh, you can see the nest while list help screen? Great. Not oh, now, but previously, yes. <laughs> Good. Now I can see it. 
um, when I <laughs> when I uh, use Wolfram, you might think you might think some. I've been using I don't know twenty years or something more. But if uh, you might think I wouldn't use help, I use help all the time. Mads, I bet you do too. No, you've memorized everything every, every time, all the time, and it's such great help. So okay, so what do I want to do? I have a function, an expression, and a test. So this is my expression. I'm going to do something to it. So. Um, if I have the list, I'm going to rotate it, right? Is that what they want me to do? Oops. Minimize this guy. Uh, reversing the first M cards. So two, four, two. I reverse these first two cards. Okay. So I would take the list. That's this slot. Uh, and reverse. Okay. So let's just do join. Um, re reverse of the first... Uh, like this, right? So I take the first one, that's two. And of the whole list, I take the first two. I reverse that guy. Oh, there's a faster way of doing it. Oh, this is okay. This is fine. So I'll reverse that and I'll join it with uh, the remainder. I think that should do it. Join that and continue until what? Until the first of it is one. Is that right? Until the first of the list is one. Why did this not work? It's two, four. This did not work. Join reverse of the list. Am I doing something wrong? Let's try. Like, just F. Yeah, just. What's that? Let's see, like, you know, that join function, you know, what it does at the first, like, you know. Okay. Let's try this on two, four, one, three. So that worked. Mm -hmm. Let's read this again. F expression test until it no longer, uh, until it no longer yields true. So it does not equal one. That's what I want. Try that. And where's their solution? Four, two, one, three. And let's put it in their form the way they like it. Done. We're two for two. Uh, advent of code. Oh, okay. Let's see advent of code. Um, I think we finished this, right? Is there anything else we needed to do? Oh, generate and show here a table of n versus top swaps of n. Okay. So this. Uh, how do you? What do you start with? For a total of four swaps for a particular number is the maximum swaps needed. Oh, uh, all right, we'll skip that. That's fine. Um, so, Phil, you have a suggestion. You know, day 11 of the advent, you know, 220 right. is fun, you know. Let's... Advent of code, let's go. Advent of code, uh, where do I go? Here, 11. Seating system. Your plane lands with plenty of time to spare. Wow, this is long. It's going to take an hour just to read. All right. The final leg is a ferry. It goes from the tropical island. As you reach the waiting area, you realize you're so early. Nobody else has arrived yet. Okay. To board the ferry. People used to choose or abandon their seat. You're pretty sure you can predict the best place to sit. What? In the waiting area. You make a quick... Okay, the seat layout is on a grid. It's either a floor, an empty seat that looks like a chair, or an occupied seat. These are not occupied, for, OK? Model the people who will be arriving shortly. Fortunately, they're predictable. Number of occupied seats. So this is like a cellular automaton adjacent to a given seat. One of the eight positions immediately. Uh, OK, so up, down, left, right, or diagonal. So that's right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight every seat simultaneously. So rules, rules, That's I'm thinking rules here. If a seat is empty and the number of uh, is zero, it becomes occupied. If it's, I think we could just translate this into a 2D cellular automaton. If a seat is occupied and four or more seats adjacent to it, this is the game of life, right? Or something similar like that. Otherwise, the seat state does not change. The floor never changes. The seats don't move. Oh, OK, so it's not the game of life. And nobody sits on the floor. Fine. 
after a second round, the seats with four or more occupied adjacent seats. Okay, we get it. At this point, the chaos is further. Once you move, you count 37 occupied seats. Simulate by applying a repeat until no how many seats end up occupied. Simulate by applying repeatedly until no seats change state. So we're going to do a fixed point. I guess we could do a fixed point list, right? If we want to do, um, if we want to see an animation, how many seats end up occupied? Um, let's just build something from scratch. Uh, uh, what's it's this new thing? Is it sequence cases? Is that what I want? Sequence cases. Let's see, sequence cases, does this work? Uh, overlaps, we want that to be true, fine. Only the first sequence, sequence replace, that's what we want, I think. Does this have a two dimensional? Let's see. Let's see if we can find a two dimensional. Nope, this is all one. Is it all one? Let's try it. Sequence. Let's just try sequence cases. Uh, and I want to find a number. Let's see if I can do this. Yeah, so let's find uh, something, 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 followed by something, five, something, followed by something, something, something. Let's see if it finds this. Oh, perfect. Wow, well, this is going to be a one-liner. Um, if we do, yeah, this is the whole thing is a one-liner. So we need, um, uh, it'll be repeated applications of sequence replace. I wonder if sequence replace itself can just do it forever. Oh, we'll just use sequence replace as the thing on the list. Okay, so we need an, a starting list. Um, Let's use this. And uh, let's do string split on the new line. Uh, it defaults on white space. This would be the same thing anyway. But we can start with that. And then we will do characters to get them all. So now we have a list. Good. This is our initial state. Just call this init. So we have init. Now we're going to do, let's just try a couple things. So we want sequence cases of init. Let's say, uh, uh, what's the what's one of the rules? If it's no occupied seats adjacent to it, the seat becomes occupied. Uh, so we want, we'll have something up, up top. We'll have here something and then an L and then a something. And we want this to replace. We want this to become, um, let me move this over a little bit. Let's make this 125. Let me know if anything is not visible. Um, so what I want it, what we're trying to do now is just, we'll do one little thing, make sure that on this init, if we, and let's print it out the way it should look. So here's our init. Let's see if we can find this one and switch it to an X. So let's say, let's be very specific. So let's say it's L, it's a dot, then it's an L. And then this is an L, an L, and an L. And this is an L, a dot, and an L. Uh, and let's say we want to go to the same thing. So we, let's call this, uh, I don't know, I for input. And we want it to be the same as it was, except uh, the middle will become an X. Let's see if this works. And gridify it. So that did not work or did I miss it? L dot L, 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 L dot L. So why is this one not replacing it? Let's see, maybe I know, don't know something about replace part. this. So that does work. So it's not finding it. Sequence replaces not, but sequence cases did find it.
Didn't we just have a working example of sequence cases? Yeah, here. This worked. What if I what if I have another one? Oh. Is this not gonna work? No, that still works. What if I put uh eight here? Yeah, it finds it. That's sequence cases. L, is this not a dot? It's a dot. Uh, okay, let's simplify it. Let's just say it's anything with an L in the middle. that work? This doesn't work, then we need to see what we've got going on in here. It is an L, it's a dot. It's init list of list. But it worked with numbers? What if these are all strings? Is that going to change anything? If this is a string, is that a problem? Who can tell me what is, it's, yeah, it works. So why is this work here, but not there? What is the difference? Shouldn't you have blank sequence fill instead of just blank? Because it's not. It's, it's three though. Oh, I see what you're saying. I think, yes, you're absolutely right. Uh, so if I had, you're right. So if I had like 10 in here, it's not going to find it, is it? Like that. That's what you're saying. Got it. Good. Um, or, uh, right. So I need, but then I need to make sure it's the same lengths. Okay. So let's make it the same lengths. We want it uh, like this. Then if it should be the same lens, you know, I I'm confused by the meaning of you know our sequence cases. What would be the difference between sequence cases and simple cases? Mm. That's a great question. So we could do this with cases. What is a pattern that matches the sequence pattern? Pattern sequence repeated, but not as Oh, maybe I just needed overlaps. Could that be it? No. Why does this not match? Well, let's make sure that this one does match. It's not that big a deal to make them match in length either. But you're right about sequence cases versus cases. This is cool. OK, and now let's try that with cases. Oh, interesting. Now now I see that. So here, you know, in the cases, it doesn't work because, you know, basically you're saying that, you know, a list of three sublists. OK, so it doesn't fit with the cases. Unless, like, for example, add one You're at right. the very end, like. Yeah. So it's on the first level only that it sequentifies it. OK, great. So here, let's make it the same length. Um, I guess let's call this uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. Such that length, I do it like this length slash at A, B, C, D, E, F. Uh, is there an all equal? No. The so union of this, the length of that is one. So there's only, they're all the same. Okay. Great. Um, Let's switch to our, let's copy this down. Control L copies the previous input. So it's, it's useful to keep the previous one for debugging. Init, and we want an L in the middle. And we want to, let's just go straight to sequence replace. 
So if we have this sequence that's that it's equal to one, replace it to uh, uh, what do we used to call this i i Hmm. I wonder what's going to happen. And grid. Okay. Something strange happened. Sequence replace. What did it do? It's a list of lists of lists. So it gave. What if I just do I? Do I need to flatten one, maybe? And then gridify. Is that the same as in it? No. No. So what is it? How can I use sequence replace? The se what, what, does sequence cases take rules? Is this equal to init? Where is init? All the first, second, third. Yeah, shouldn't if I flatten one on this, shouldn't that be the same as a knit? Why is it not? Where is it different? The last one. Oh, I don't know what order it's coming in. Oh, and do we know? Uh, let's go back to the question. Uh, right, we didn't look up and down on here, did we? We don't need to look up and down. If it's the first, so we have to treat the first row and the last row differently. Um, okay, let's try a different approach. How big is init? It's 10 by 10, I assume. Okay, so it's 10 by 10. So there's 100 numbers. Each number we will try, uh, we can write a function to try how many numbers are around my number. Right, so position. So, uh, what's a good way around? We already there's a built-in around, right? Uh, chairs around. No, uh, what do they call it? Floor, positions around. Okay, or, uh, integers around. Given an integer, um, it would be nice to know uh, the locations of all the other integers that are the eight, the up to eight integers that are around it. So uh, we can do some. Some stuff is easy. If n is less than, or, oh, so we should just do modulo stuff. If n is less than 10, then the answer will be, so if n is, okay, let's just do a switch then. Switch n. If it's 1, then the answer is 2, 11, 12. I don't want to hard code this, do I? Uh, maybe let's hard code a few and then we'll find a general pattern uh, or, or just so uh, one, one is going to go to 2, 11, 12, 2 is going to go to 1, 3, 11, 12, 13. Is that right so far? 1 goes to 11 and 12 and 2, 2 goes to 1, 3, 11, 12, 13. And let's try, let's say uh, 12. Where, let's say 13. Where is that going? 13 is going to, it'll go to 1 above, which is minus 3. Good. So we can, fine. So we can just do some modulo. 12, 14. Oh, this, this is easy. Uh, 22, 23, 24. Fine. So here's the pattern. So integers around, we just, take, um, let's do the whole list. So it'll be n minus 10 is the previous row. So n minus 11, n minus 10, n minus 9, n minus 1, 
not myself, n plus 1, n plus 10, 1 would get me to 11, so n plus 9, n plus 10, n plus 11. Good, and then I just want to select uh, for it to be between uh, 1 and uh, 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 100. Try that. Let's try that on a few of these. So integers around. So two, two, why is 10? Ah, it can't do 10. Uh, why can't it do 10? So I can't do that simply of a select, no problem. So let's select uh, uh, these, right? Because 10 is on the previous thing. Uh, select these such that they are uh, greater than or equal to uh, mod mod n n. Let's try that. Oops. Select. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Let's start with eleven. Eleven goes to one and two. That's correct. Twelve goes to two and three. It should also have a one. Twelve, one, two, three as long as it's above, let's start the simplest one. Select uh, for a given n, I want, let's start the simplest one, n minus one and n plus two, right? Those are the simplest. Uh, but of those, I only want the ones that are of the same uh, quotient. So quotient is what I want, quotient, if it's, uh, let's, let's try that. One, two, three, good. So starting with the 11th, it'll be one and two. The 12 will be one, two, three, two, three, four. Good. Uh, so long as the quotient is above it. So this one is 10. Uh, we want this to be mod. Oh, there's gotta be a simpler way. Uh, so we want this to be quotient n, let's see, one, two, three, four, I really wanted to use sequence cases. I really did. I really do want to use sequence cases. What did we decide sequence cases? We just didn't understand it, right? Oh, that's not the one. That's not the one. Sequ this one. Let's not flatten it. Let's let's figure this out, because then we're solving three problems. Um, and we want overlaps. Okay, now we're on to something. That's what we were forgetting, the overlaps. Uh, init here, boom, boom, boom. Ah, okay, now if we flatten one. Getting closer. So this is for the first row. How do sequence cases return? For, the, for every sequence that it finds, right, that match the sequence pattern, give a list of the right-hand side corresponding to sublists that match, to sublists that match. Hmm. Sublists that match. Mm-hmm. 
All right, let's go back to this idea, the integers. Um, yeah, so we want to, uh, let's see, 1, 10, 11, so 11, 12, 13. What if we just, oh, let's do it the simplest way. This is much simpler. Should have done this right away. Um, for every integer between, so we'll, we'll rewrite this function, integers around, right? We want to know the, the location of the things that are around me, my diagonals and stuff like that. So uh, uh, for it, if the integer is between, if the mod of n and 10 is bigger than uh, 1, right? So that's from 2. Yeah, it's, it's bigger than 1 and less than 9. Then it'll be, uh, uh, and the quotient, let's say, and the quotient of n10 is between 1 and 9. Then uh, it'll be exactly what we had before. So n minus, where'd that go? n minus 11, n minus 10, n minus 9, and... Do I need them in a separate sublist? No, I don't. Uh, n minus 1, n plus 1, n plus 9, n plus 10, n plus 11. Let's try that. Uh, and uh, a common thing, if you have a lot of uh, definitions of the same function, it's useful just to clear all to make sure that's not a problem. Uh, so let's try it. Integers around. So 39, it didn't do good. But uh, for, th let's say, th what is this one? This must be 37. Uh, let's make a table so we see what's happening. Table um, ij, i through 10, and j through 10. And we want the, uh, this to be the number i plus 10j. Uh, I guess let's go from 0 to 9. That right? Uh, uh, J, sorry, J from zero to nine. Let's try that. Nope. Okay, there we go. So this goes to ten. Why didn't that work? And this goes from one. To 10. Okay, now we're in business. Uh, and let's gridify this bad boy. All right, so we want number 59. What's integers around of 59? We want to, we're hoping this will be 48, 49, 50, 58, 60, 68, 69, 70. Nope. Why? Because less than or equal to. Uh, so let's just make this 10 and 0. 0 and 10. Uh, where were we? 59, 48, 49, 50, 58, 60, 68, 69, 70. Great. Uh, so that should work for everything up through even 89, right? OK, we're almost done. So now for things that are, let's just have a couple different cases. Now for, let's say, if it's, if the mod equals 0, but the quotient is, uh, so the mod is on the, uh, it's the column. So if the column, it's the left-hand column, and it's in the middle, then it'll be everything except this and this and this. Let's try that. So let's try integers around, let's say, 81. 71, 72. Ah, it still has 80. Why does it have 80? 81. Where did it get 80? Oh. Oh, I was doing the wrong side. This is this side. Uh, right. So this would be n minus 11, n minus 10, but not n minus 9, and n minus 1, but not n plus 1 and n plus 9 and n plus 10, but not n plus 12. 
I just got the wrong column. So 81 would be, oh, I didn't do that one yet. Let's do uh, 80. 80 would be 69, 70, 79, 89, 90. Beautiful. That should work for all of them. Does it, it won't work for 100, but we have that part done. Okay, there's, there's got to be a simpler way for this, but that's okay. Uh, now, if the mod is in fact equal to, can't be 10. Why am I putting 10s in here? This has to be, no, less than 10. Uh, no, but if it's nine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, now, now we want it to be one. If the mod is one, now we'll say it's uh, n minus 12. Uh, uh, no, n minus, what am I talking about? n minus 10, and n minus nine, and n plus one, and n plus 10, and n plus 11. Let's try that. So integers around 71. Should be 61, 62, I messed something up. 72, I messed something up. Integers around, so that mod, mod of this is one, but the, and the quotient should work. So it should be this function. Let's, uh, let's just echo in here so we see it's happening. 71, 60, and minus, why is it giving three? And it didn't echo, so where did it go? Oh, because I uh, I have to put this in the one. Okay. 61, 62, 72, 81, 82. Good. We don't need the echo anymore. So how many do we have correct so far? Let's do integers around uh, all of them. Let's test one. So we don't have those done. Fine. Negative one is not good. So that's the first. The number 10 is still right. Right. We didn't do the first row. Let's do the first row now. That's if the um, quotient is zero. If the quotient is zero, exactly, that means it's the first row. Then uh, I guess there's two cases. Either it's if the mod is, if it's in the middle, then it'll be, uh, uh, it'll be this big thing. It'll just be n minus one, n plus one, n plus one, uh, n plus nine, n plus 10, n plus 11. Let's try that. So we're trying numbers like three, uh, like two through nine. So two would be one, three, 11, 12, 13. Seven would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Wait, one, two, three, four. Oh, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven would be six, eight, 16, 17, 18. Great, we've got that one. Uh, we don't have one. Well, let's just hard code one. That's the easiest thing. Uh, the corners. Let's hard code the corners. Integer digits of one would be two, 11, 12. Integer. Uh, yeah, that's the easiest thing. 10 would be. 9, 19, 20, integer digits of 91 would be 81, 82, 92. Did I do that right? 91 would be 81, 82, 92. And finally, this would be 89, 90, 99. Okay, so we have that. The only thing we're still missing, I believe, is the last row. So let's double check. Uh, what did I do wrong? Why is this not working? Should I just make this an equal? Your digits in integer digits one. Oh, do I need to hit enter here? Well, you put integer digits, you know, integer around you, man. Yes, thank you. Thank you, man. Oh, what do you feel? <laughs> like, thank we you. should also watch the time, you know. Oh, no, what's happening with the time? We have about... Oh, we got this. We got this. Unless there's something else you guys want to do, but this is this will be good. Integer around. Uh, 
let's just double check. Let's say 20 works. 9, 10, 19, 29, 30, good. Uh, 91, we know works. We hard coded it. What about 92? 81, 82, 83, 91, 93. Oh, great. So fine. All we have to do is uh, select less than or equal to 100. See if that works. I think that's everything. 95, 84, 85, 86, 94, 96. Great. So we have the working function integers around. What's the point of that? Now we can go through each one and uh, we'll, we'll just make, uh, um, uh, uh, so let's do a table, I guess. So our position will be from one to a hundred. Uh, we are going to check inside the, uh, the, the preceding, uh, let's do fixed point list. Uh, we'll, ca we'll call we'll call it the function. We'll call it a G. That's our grid, and we'll check if inside the grid, whichever we'll start with, it's uh, init. Um, if the G of P uh, integers around. So if G of integers around of P, if they are, what are the rules? No occupied seats adjacent to it. So we, we have these and we want to count the number of occupied seats. That's like this. If that count is uh, zero, then I'm going to say Yeah, then I'm, I'm going to, for this point, it will be, yeah, this is good. If it's, if it's zero, then it becomes occupied. If a seat is empty, so if G of P is L and the count around it is, uh, I'll just apply it once so we can test it. If uh, in the table, the location is a chair and the count of the stuff around it, this is zero, then I will make it what it needs to be. Otherwise, it'll be whatever it used to be. Let's try that once. Part two, eleven, twelve of uh, sure it can, but if you don't like that, I'll get you this way. You can't run from us. Part eleven does not exist? Sure it does. Part 11, integers around. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, uh, right, extract flatten G. If G part 18, where do I else do I have a G there? Flatten of G. Okay. And let's gridify that. Why did it not do it? Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, then let's do, this is P like that. Yeah, this is gonna be great. So those are the positions. Um, and then we can just, so actually we don't need it because we know it's always gonna be that order. So then we partition. Ten. So this is one iteration. Everything got occupied instantly. Nice. Because I didn't, if a seat is empty and there are no, that's the way it should be. Uh, is that what they had too or no? Yes. That look correct. That looks correct. Good. If a seat is occupied, okay. So if not this, where does this end? If a seat is occupied, uh, 
then I not write if. I'm occupied then this. Wait, if this is true, then it's occupied otherwise. This. Uh, oh, uh, otherwise, yeah, this will, will be a new thing. Otherwise, whatever it was. I think that's, sh let's just make sure this still works. Good. Now, so if it is occupied and four or more are also occupied, gosh, we can simplify this later. And the count of these is four or more, then it becomes empty. Otherwise, it does not change. I think that's it. Let's do it twice. So let's do nest list so we can see it evolve. And let's do it twice. And uh, let's gridify it. Whoops. Uh, is that what they have? So we start the init, and then it's all these guys. And then, is that perfect? That's perfect. Uh, so now let's do a uh, fixed point list, right? Let's do fixed point list and cross our fingers. Mads, are your fingers ready to cross? All right, here we go. And it did something, so that's good. Let's gridify that. And here's the entire animation. Where does it end? Three more rounds. OK, that's the solution. And then uh, once people, you, you count 37 occupied seats, let's count the number of seats in the last one. <clears throat> we'll just do last of this. And we want counts of the number of occupied seat, not counts, but count. Why didn't that work? Oh, 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 I have to look further down. Uh, count 37, great. Now, we're going to simulate it by applying the seating rules. Uh, simulate it? But if this is, I don't understand. Did we already finish the problem, or is there something else to do? Phil Phillips is asking you, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> ah, there's this advent of code day 11 challenge um, where you're modeling some seats moving, which it looks like a 2D automaton. Um, but is there anything else we're supposed to do here that we haven't done? 37 occupied seats. Uh, simu so should I start it randomly? Is that what they want me to start with? Um, fine. We can start it randomly. Um, uh, random choice, and we'll do that. How do we do a random choice? Yep, n one I two, so ten ten. All right, we're doing it. Here comes a fixed point. Okay, and let's count it. We want to count the number of occupied chairs, right? 27, 28, 24, 28, 24, 33. So let's do this a bunch of times. Let's do it, let's say, 100 times. The histogram. OK, what, what, else, what more are we supposed to do? I don't understand. How many seats end up occupied? Well, is there that? What what are we supposed to do? I don't understand. Are we done? Is this is this a great success? I don't know, I don't know this question. How many seats end up occupied? Repeatedly until it's thirty seven. I don't understand. Somebody do this. Am I missing something? Let's do the other thing somebody was mentioning, which was to see the animation. So let's just do that. That's pretty easy. Let's grid at fixed point list of this guy. Uh, we'll start with init. 
right? That's the one we wanted to see. Uh, and then we just uh, list animate. Uh, animation rate one. Okay, so there it goes. I can't tell. Did we solve it? Are we heroes? Or where's our parade? Why is there no victory music or march or elephants? <laughs> Fireworks. One thing, like you know, Philip Phillips mentioned that we bravely never save this notebook throughout the one hour of live coding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's save it right now because you know some of our users, you know, they are asking about you know this notebook. Yes, we will provide this notebook. Oh, sure, sure. Maybe, yeah. Uh, by the way, you know, there is like, you know, a link to a community post that uh, you can follow us there and uh, we are going to put it on chat. If you ask, have any question for, you know, Phil, you can ask it there. Okay. Yes, like... fixed point for sure. Flip, you're correct. There it is. The fixed point list. Flip! How come I can't see you? This is not right. You should be here, man. What what other questions are there? Anything? We have two minutes. Anything? Uh, you can ask about God. Anything? We will have feel next time, you know. Uh, so yeah. So here. submit submit your questions on the community post, or is that the best place, Mads, on the community post? Yes, the that's the best place. Yeah. Is any questions? Anything you'd like to look at? Um, Anything that's bothering you about Wolfram or it's exciting you or bothering you about other programming languages you don't know what to do with yourself, instead of tearing your hair out, just ask a question. Within a week at most, you'll have the answer to all of life's questions. Awesome. I think that's a very good point that we could wrap up this session. Thanks, everyone, for watching. You know, very soon we are going to upload this video on Wolfram YouTube channel. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, you too.